is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648, internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, the author of Mastering Probability, Steve Rhodes. Hi guys, Steve is off today. Uh, Tom will be on the next hour. I'm doing his first hour show here. I'm John Logan. If you've never listened to me, might not be a bad thing, but uh, we're gonna, we're gonna go through some of the motions here. I hope you'll get some value out of it. Uh, we do the first. I do the first hour every day on TFN eight to nine, and uh, we pretty much focus. In case you're just joining this show and haven't seen the first show ever that I do. Um, pretty much focus on uh, our derivative of market profile in general um, and some of the things surrounding those profiles to give a little bit of a biased opinion on how to treat uh, stocks limit or stocks futures currencies treasuries how to eliminate one side of the marketplace hopefully so you're trading from a position of strength either okay to be long not okay to be short or vice versa things like that or if we're in a balanced area and there's really no edge we talk about things like that all the time, and um, if you guys just joining again, we we want to always welcome any phone calls to do any instant analysis. I think the phone number is on the TFNM website, and I'm sure they post it in between segments here. But uh, also, if you if you're interested in, in any kind of uh, get together webinars or things like that, uh, maybe you can send TFNM an email or two. Uh, we've got a lot of different things that we do in general, uh, my company does, and uh, we want everybody to be as in the know as possible so there's no unknowns when you're trying to use any new information. If you're thinking about using some new information, from my experience, I've always ended up paying some kind of tuition fees by learning something new, by not knowing it fully and completely as I probably should. Um, so again, if you're thinking about doing something with some of the information that we talk about, it might not be a bad idea to do some demo trading at the beginning or uh, just you know, basically gather as much information as humanly possible before you start putting your toe in the water with any real funds. Um, we're always a big fan of uh, you know, don't really risk anything you don't have to. Um, so and this, this game's about risk-reward pretty much exclusively. So uh, the number to call is 877-927-6648. And uh, I'm in North Carolina. I'm usually in Asia. Um, not usually, but half the, half the uh, time. And uh, the connection is markedly better here right now than, than, than uh, some of the some of the ranks I'm in in Asia. So I'm I'm, I'm very happy to come to you this morning with uh, unadulterated technical situations. So here we go. I uh, didn't talk last hour a little bit about gold, so we want to just kind of you know refocus on gold. We usually kind of peruse it every day, um, and the thing that's really that was relatively disturbing yesterday. Um, or past couple of days was, you know, gold didn't really want to get out of its own way, and now we're back above. I'm, I'm not a big fan of going short gold, by the way, but I, you know, I know that gold can get away from you sometimes. It's a very volatile instrument. My kind of uncle area was this 1199, 1200 area being below there and being able to hopefully get back in the game either above 1199 1200 or into this inflection point down below at 1152 so lo and behold we kind of you know ricocheted around down here this poc point of control or mode of the profile uh this blue line here we came down and touched it i don't i don't put a lot of relevance into the modes or these blue lines or these peak of distributions or point of controls however you want to talk peak of distribution is a statistical um, term that when we're talking about bell curve analysis, that's some of the some of the high points or whatever. There's a mean, there's a mode. We're we're kind of focused on the mode here, the most well traveled area um, that we just point out for you here. Um, in short term trading, and uh, my partner in Spain really does a, does a great dissertation on this, Eddie. Um, these point of controls are really, really cool in short-term trading, and he, he, you know, we'd be more than happy to give a 
uh, uh, you know, a dissertation on that, just uh, please notify TFNN. But uh, the, the, you know, we're back above the 1,200 area. We haven't had a close above the 1,200 area. I'd like to see that. And, again, I'm just kind of looking at this only from the long side. And then we've got some more disturbance that we got to get through around 1218, 1219, um, which we did have a close above last week, which was, man, di- very disheartening for me in, in particular when we kind of dive back into that weekly profile. Couldn't stay above. So, uh, again, gold is kind of – broken my heart lately from the long side but again you know trading is trading and we've got to try to put the stops in and no one to say uncle in certain situations that we can't control as they well, i was thinking i was laughing about this this morning i was remembering the shawshank redemption uh which is one of my favorite movies uh what's the guy's name uh morgan freeman he, he said hope is a dangerous thing and in trading it's it's uh Oh, God, is it dangerous? So don't hope that gold goes up. Just take it for what it's worth. And if you want gold to go down, um, I think you've got some, some actually decent situations on your side of the fence there. So, all right. Okay. Uh, I want to cover a couple things that, uh, other than uh, some of the things we didn't cover this morning on the 8 to 9 show. I want to cover some of the, some of the markets uh, the, outside of the U.S. here. And uh, I want to look at the Shanghai again. This is something that, again, we've got uh, a breadth situation on the Shanghai, and I'm going to go over to the breadth on the Shanghai, and I'm going to pull it up, and here we go. Very, very strong breadth and has not indicated, especially on the long-term weekly, that we have had any reasons to, to look at these individual instruments. And we're looking at the Shanghai 380 uh, as a breadth analysis, we've got a really big sample set to really get a good breadth on, on the relative to profiles on the Shanghai. And here's the situation on the Shanghai. Um, you know, again, this is this is kind of one of those things where you know we may kind of okay, we reached previous highs. We may kind of kind of consolidate here a little bit. We may pull back severely, but um, as of right now, I don't see the severe pullback numbers in force relative to breadth to start worrying about that. I think we're going to eclipse these these near-term highs, believe it or not. We had this profile up here, again, an indicator in itself, well below price action as we had that big kind of 10% range that day. That's bullish, and we talked about that being bullish and not having the fear to really move forward from the long side on the Shanghai based on that alone. And uh, we did put the Shanghai in here as a... And let me just pull this up. We put it in our future section because and I don't know if Michael labeled this as an index or not. Let me see. Nope. Yeah, we're going to label that an index. We put the Shanghai composite down here. Here's the inflection points to be aware of. Um, that's actually an index. That's not a future. So um, we're going to relabel that. Michael, if you're listening, please take note of that. Um, because we put that in yesterday for you guys. We also put the ruble in the currency section. And I want to take a look at the at the ruble really quick, take a look at some offshore products, so to speak. We talked about the ruble in this move up um, with the new, the fundamental news and then the power move up after that fundamental news being the 17.5% ballpark that the Russian – central bank had changed from 10 and a half percent or in that neighborhood overnight to try to stem the the massive cave-in of the ruble in general versus the u.s dollar and we also talked about um you know that that probably being the highs um and that had really nothing behind it other than not a gut feeling but just kind of seen that movie before with fundamental announcements um and the ability for uh you know the crowd to kind of like really Let's take in all the information and then let's kind of see where things are, are at. Um, we talked about this at least consolidating, and lo and behold, I want you to really look at this. We had this profile up here today. Price action was higher. That's relatively bullish on the devaluation of the of the ruble. And we came down and hit that unfair high, which was predetermined ahead of time. And I'm going to point this out to you. Lows at 58.09. And that top of the box is 57.99. Okay, so in a volatile instrument like the ruble, which is trading, uh, you know, 50 pip changes, like as a next step up or down from where it's currently. I mean, this thing's not trading, in, not trading in one pip instruments. It's trading like 
in one pip increments is trading in 50 pip in increments. And if you want to verify that, just go pull up a, a currency platform with it. And having a situation where you are 10 pips noise level away from those unfair highs to use it as a bounce point, I feel like we're going to move a little bit higher here on the price of the of this uh, RUB USD pair, um, and this has kind of been the stopping point on the you know come back and and find support to move higher. This is the only information we've had on the weekly. As you can see, no new supply up here, which is really a very bullish situation in, in itself. Um, we've got some overextended bars here, but that's just going to naturally happen when you have moves like that um, here's the situation on the 240s as you remember the bottom here 5843 it's a little bit lower than 5899 let me just make sure that's not over here uh, 5799 excuse me 57 let's check that 57.99 58.43 it's about 40, 45 pips away from those daily unfair highs. We came back and retested this. So you've got a new box appearing on the 240. So if you're going to play this from the long side, at least you know where you can say uncle below that daily unfair high, which we've already used as support. And I think that's not a bad thing. A lot of times, as you know, in trading, these guys will gun for these people putting stops around these um, near-term lows or near-term highs, you got to watch out for that. You got to, you got to be able to say that, you know, I got to give myself a little bit more appetite for risk on this type of scenario. There's some huge volatility in this. I don't have to tell you that. You got to be a moron not to understand that at this stage. So you got to give yourself a little bit more um, area to be wrong in if you're going to stay in these longer-term moves. But I feel like the ruble is going to power up, and uh, you know, that's just the way I. I feel about the near term on the ruble. So, got about a minute, uh, about 40 seconds left before we get our first break here. And uh, I'm going to actually, in the next break, I'm act after the next break, I'm going to pull up some of the, the footsies of the world, the DAXs of the world. Uh, we got to take a look at crude oil as it's kind of starting to move around a little bit this morning. And the Nikkei, um, because the Nikkei yen, not spread, but that relationship that we talked about, separating itself a little bit. Uh, I want to take a look at that in general because we were talking about, you know, having equal monetization on one side of the equal side as the other on the yen Nikkei as it may start spreading apart a little bit wider. So um, come back and join us in about 10, eh, about five or six minutes, and we're going to cover as much as we can. Tom may join us for this section too. I'm not sure yet. Be right back. If you're an active trader looking for that edge when it comes to trading and investments then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to tom o'brien's daily market letter market insights tom o'brien's daily newsletter market insights comes out every market day at around 9 30 a.m and provides tom's daily commentary on the broad market including the dow nasdaq and s p Plus, specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. 
Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Check out the new look of Tiger TV. Now you can see all hosts, charts, and computer screens live in high definition. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Think or Swim, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV. Now, crystal clear in high definition, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't seen the new look of Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com. Steve, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Traditionally at 727-445-1044. Hmm. I just noticed Steve's music is better than mine. It's kind of uplifting. All right, we're back. Um, we talked about the ruble a little bit here and uh, talked about the demarcation line, the fence, if you will, around that uh, 58 area. stops down below there if you're going to play it from the long side. And uh, possibly, uh, you know, we may move higher, but that remains to be seen. Um, we've had a decent pullback from the general 80 area, uh, you know, got about a 60, 62 point. Uh, it's, it's just hard to – I mean, I, it's hard to even say that. I mean – I'm sorry, 20, 22, 23 point, 2200, 2300 pip pullback. It's hard to, I and mean, it's just amazing. That is a, that is a move. Whew. All right, we talked about the euro earlier on the, the earlier show today. I'll just kind of peruse that really quick here. Um, that's been the kind of the gift that keeps on giving. Had that just, serious gift for it to come up and hit that inflex point on the bottom there, 125.74. Uh, kiss it within, whatever, five or six pips there and give us maximum leverage on the short side again. And we're trading, God, man, 300 pips lower already. And uh, here's where that happened right there. Remember, weekly takes precedence over daily over 240. And then we got the confirmation below the daily unfair highs. It was kind of, you know, something to write home about and we've reached the targets temporarily down below so that is kind of where i'm saying you know what let's just take some off the table here and then let's kind of reassess things we could bounce around this fair auction a little bit here on the daily so keep that in mind and uh 
hope you've been watching our shows on this one. The yen is just continuing to power up, and that is coincidentally uh, with the U.S. dollar going higher and higher here as I see this. And we talked on the earlier show about not being short the yen ever against the government policy, basically, which is, again, that's just been an amazing year of or two years worth of government intervention forecasting and letting you know what they're going to do and what they're not going to allow to happen and the end situation um, again with the extra added kicker of their recessionary type information coming out um, and the government saying they want to devalue the yen and they're going to make sure it gets devalued so they can compete again and the unfair lows right now 118.0708 we got a close back above there that means it's okay to get long again and we had the retest today and the ability to move higher and I feel like we're easily going to get back into the 120, 121 areas on the end so kind of need to buckle yourself in and make sure you got your stops oriented at least around something that you can lean on uh as far as sanity where we you know we may be wrong on some of these trades let's take a look quickly at the dollar because this has moved relatively significantly since the morning show actually and here we go so uh we talked about reaching some targets above at the 89.61 area that's sitting here and we've Let's see if we let me just kind of look at this. We've reached it before. We backed off, as you can see here. I'm going to pull up the 240s. We actually have a new profile appearing on the 240s below. Remember, that's bullish in itself, and it looks like even those targets being met, we may actually power through those now. Um, a close above that, <clears throat> excuse me, 8961 area is going to be. Is that right? 89. Yeah, 8961 area is going to be relatively powerful for the dollar. And remember, things on their highs want to go higher. And if we get near that area, we're probably at least going to blow through it temporarily. So that's the way the ball bounces for the dollar and the yen right now. And I think both of the yen's going to get devalued more and the dollar is going to get valued more. So that's just the uh, the nature of that. We've got to talk a little bit about the NASDAQ. A lot of guys out there are trading the NASDAQ. Okay. I want to comment on something in the den in a second. Uh, we'll wait till after the first break. But the NASDAQ, the numbers we talked about, 42 on the March contract here, 42.12 sitting there daily up for lows. Now the NASDAQ's back in the daily profile, and that's going to take above 20.52 on the S&Ps on a relative sense. So if we close back in the fair auction here, that's actually ex extremely damning for the shorts. Here's the day, Here's the weekly situation. Let me get this spread out so we can see it. Actually, here we go. Um, similar to the S and P's, had that 4120 bottom down here that we had to get back above to start thinking about going long. Now we're back in the daily situation, um, and now stop can be oriented around 4212. We'll be right back, folks, after this next break. Quiet Markets investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. 051. Call them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Each and every time that the dollar ticks higher, S&P wants higher price. Each and every time that the dollar is ticking lower, guess what? S&P wants lower price. Dollar, the metals, and the S&P are going tick for tick. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. What does that bell mean? I don't know what that means. Oh, the market's open. Okay. Stock market, that is. Here we go. Let's take a look at the S&Ps as they open. Um, you know, generally speaking, that's a pretty heck, heck of a ride in the past 24 hours. So there's going to be some people probably just taking something off the table that have that don't trade futures, um, just selling some stock and today traders, whatever. But uh, here's the inflection point to be aware of the big one. Uh, we've got uh, 2026 now, let's call it 2027 on the SP sitting here. Uh, that is going to allow people to use that as a fence on the long side or the short side. It, we're you know, we're kind of you know, we've gone a long ways pretty quickly here, and you know, going back to this situation. I'm going to pull up our breath on the uh, S&Ps. We should have the dailies. Yep, dailies flipped over positive. And we had a lot of these things. I'm just going to not to disturb you fully, but I am going to go back into the S&P 500. And we're going to – we saw a lot of yellow cells on the dailies indicating new box attempting to appear on the bottom um, and now we're going to probably let's just go back to the dailies and let's say that we want to see new box okay and let's just see where we sort here 
And lo and behold, a lot of those got wiped out. Not all of them, but a lot of them because uh, we had stocks open. And this resorts real time, by the way. So if you put a filter in, it's going to recalculate about every 30 to 60 seconds and just recompile. Um, it's not it's not a static list. So we got rid of a lot of those. We flipped over to new profiles. A lot of that went into the middle ground. What does that mean? I'm going to go back in time here, and I'm going to pull up our information on our dailies. Actually, I want to show you the weekly. So this is our admin terminal, by the way. And uh, I want to show you, and I'm going to take out the middle ground. The weekly breadth has stayed positive since about the 17th. Actually, a little bit after that, the daily turned positive on the 17th. There's that September 19th turn negative area. If you go back in time, look at those dates, you'll see some major market changes in tone. Uh, but we never really got, again, into breadth negative here on the weeklies. We got very, very close. But these speed dials kind of kept me looking for longs around those weekly unfair lows around 1968 because that was just the, you know, by default thing to do based on, you know, the, the stocks weren't going into major technical damage yet on the very long-term indicator that we use. And the daily uh, had actually provided some opportunities, and I'm going to pull this up. The daily had provided some opportunities, Brett turning negative on the 9th, 10th. So below those inflection points around 2052 on the March contract allowed us to kind of intermediately get short with some targets down below those those weekly 1968 numbers. So, again, um, 2027 is going to be the big number now, and we're trading 2031.50 now. So, I, I, again, I think the longs kind of have to just reassess things and maybe based on their appetite for risk kind of sit on the sidelines a little bit below the 2027 area, if that makes sense. Um, I think – We've got a caller maybe that's on the line. Steve, is that true? I forgot about that. Hello. Is some, yeah, hey, is this is this Charlie? It is Charlie. Hey, hey how are you? Hey, good. How are you? <laughs> I was I'm beginning just... to wonder if you knew how this worked. <laughs> You know what? Um, I, I may not fully, but I appreciate you hanging in there. I, it was my fault. I forgot you're on the line. My my fault. What's on your mind, bud? No, no sweat. You probably have a little jet lag, right? If you can see it in my eyes, yeah, I got up at one thirty this morning again, and uh, you know have kind of been nibbling and drinking coffee since uh, one thirty a.m. But yeah, I appreciate you uh, um, understanding that. Thank you. Uh, do you, are you familiar with the anti jet lag diet? No, but if you'll dish it out to me, I'll I'll eat it. What what what, what is it? Uh, the Argonne Institute did it, I think, during the war, okay. uh, because people were working third shifts, mm -hmm. whatever, and uh, they came up with a diet. So it's good for travelers. Uh, I've done it, and um, it's worked for me going over to Europe. So you may want to take a look at it. Okay. Um, just do a search on Google, anti-jet lag diet, and if you've got the determination or discipline, uh, it might help you out. But, you know, just food for thought for anybody that's a traveler. Appreciate that. I've, I've actually had some success with melatonin, but I just have completely forgot to even take it. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll look into that. Thank you. What's, uh, what's, what's going on? Okay, uh, UCO. It's uh, you know it's a ProShares um, oil, crude oil. Okay. okay. And I didn't listen to you in the first uh, segment that you had uh, back at eight o'clock. So if you handled it already, I'm sorry. No, no, no. no. Let's let's take a look at it. Let's let's first of all understand that we have had a new profile appear today, and uh, just to give some people some. Uh, uh, points of uh, reference here on the on the current profile on the daily, 1282 unfair highs and the lows are 1102. So keep those in mind. We're smack dab in the middle of that right now, trading 1175. Um, we're still in a defined downtrend. Um, I want to also reference crude oil a little bit here just to see if there's anything different going on since the last time I showed it. Not, not really. Um, we talked about these 240 levels uh being a lid here those seemingly have actually held pretty well in the last 
Crude oil is off two dollars since I was talking about it before. Actually, around that fifty nine area, um, so we're down about fifty seven. And I, you know, until we break on crude oil, the fifty nine area, I think you really got to try to stay with the downtrend. I know this has kind of been some volatile things going on lately, and volatile times, you you know, may indicate a, a market change in tone. I'm aware of that, but uh, you know we've had the profiles we've had the profiles expand down here on crude oil, and that that was a natural expansion in our algorithm, and that means that we're get, we were getting prepared for volatility. We've got it. We still stayed contained within at least a balanced area, and not not gotten above the balanced area into an imbalanced situation. Uh, which would cause me to think a little bit more so on the, hey, you know what, the trend is in danger. I may want to like sit out for a while. But let me go back to UCO while we're speaking about crude oil. Um, and you know what? I mean, I, I would continue to look at this from the short side and continue to pick battles on the short side, is my opinion, up into the 1282 area with stops above there on UCO because at that stage, you know, we'd probably be looking at a little bit of technical damage there, and a close above 12.82 would definitely put this uh, move in danger. I know that sounds crazy being in the hole this far, but, uh, you know, we got to keep turning the rents the same way unless until we're told differently, if that makes any sense, Charlie. Yeah, I respect your analysis. <laughs> Appreciate it. you have anything else you want to talk about while we're, while we're on the phone? Or is that, is that um, good? No, not, a, no, not really. Um, okay. Sorry, I... I was only prepared for one. <laughs> okay. No problem. I was just checking with you. Take Appreciate care, you man. calling. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Bye. Okay. Bye. All right. So that's a little bit about UCO. Um, check my clock here. I'm not used to doing Steve's show. Yep. Okay. We've got a little time left. Um, and I'm going to go back to this. Okay. So as we talk about you know, the daily is changing tone and, and things of that nature. Um, what I want to do here is, again, just go into the S&P 500. I've got that up. Let me just kind of clear the sorting. Okay, now I've got my S&P 500 stocks up again. And we were going into some of the breadth charts here. And uh, let me see what I was going to do here. Okay. Wait for this to refresh. Okay, uh, this is our admin terminal again, too. I want to pull up our daily breadth historical charts. I want to go in between here as this finishes refreshing. Okay, I'm going to pull that up. Okay, so uh, that was at December 9th, December 10th rollover from negative to positive, and then yesterday, um, at the same time, we were bouncing up those weekly on for lows. We had our breath today actually roll positive. So, you know, these don't have – these can bounce around. They can kind of get caught up in this kind of mode here like we did around before we started caving in on the 19th. The weekly breath turned negative at the same time on the 19th right in here as we did on the weekend, the 19th to 22nd. Um, but, again, this is this is pretty positive for the market in general because the breath now is becoming uh, a little more – convicted on the on the north side on the weekly and the daily as as much as that may not make sense to you that the market just continues to go higher in the face of international issues but uh you know the u.s right now seemingly is the stable land um and that may be the tone that the world is looking for right now along with the u.s dollar proving that um as it has in the last you know couple or a month or two so, again, I want to do another filter here on our scanner, and I want to go into the – I'm just going to pick our weekly and daily, and I'm going to just choose – I'm sorry, I'm going to choose a boat. I'm sorry, I didn't want to choose that. I want to choose uh, bottom. And as you can see here, uh, Genworth Financial, GNW, you've got one candidate out of 500 stocks that's meeting that criteria. So I want to look into GNW. And remember, the, the market, and I'm just going to go back to the S&Ps here really quick just so I don't shoot myself in the foot here. Yeah, we're trading 2033, 2034 right now. Remember that big inflection point on the daily is 2027 
I remember correctly. Genworth Financial, here's the situation here. We're sitting on weekly unfair lows. We're not really climbing high. It's a $7 stock. And we're just now have some inflection points here we can pay attention to, namely the 770 area and the 786 area. So we've got to clear all that to really start being wrong on Genworth Financial. We, pro we were provided some decent inflection points to get short again back here November 21st, and we met some targets down here. But we're just not really wanting to get out of our way here. So again, in the face of the market rally and, and the weeklies and the dailies lining up here, um, you've got a chance to go long, but you want to wait and just let it clear all this if you can. And the scanner kind of picked that out for you in a real easy way. And I want to pull up again. I want to pull up another couple of candidates here. I want to choose bottom on the dailies. And I want to take a look at some things that are, you know, just really not getting out of their own way. AVP, Avon products. I want to take a look at that. And again, in the face of a market rally like this, if we do have any pullbacks, the theory of a relative strength scale is that weaker stocks will fall faster than stronger stocks in a weak market. So you've got a AVP Definitely weak on you know downtrend for sure here. AVP has rallied back up to, into an inflection point, still below profiles, and uh, 956, excuse me, 959 bottom of the box. We got kind of a little gift there, rolling back up in the bottom of profiles. You're gonna have to call it uh, quits on, on a on a short position here, in my opinion, above 993 for sure. That's the top of the fair auction and higher. But right now you've got an inflection point you can play around with, and again around 993 on the short side for a weak stock and a strong, huge move up. Okay, a couple of things to check. Just want to check gold. What's going on with gold again? And see if. Sitting about the same spot as earlier in the show, a little bit above that 1,200 area. Um, and the dollar rallying, this is, you know, again, gold, you know, it's, I, I, you know I'm, I'm, I'm obviously more biased towards the long side. But, again, I'm still going to use this 1199, 1,200 area as kind of like the the uncle point for me on that. There's no reason in, in staying in gold any lower based on the appetite for risk, uh, you know, and, and a battle point, again, around 1152. But again, the dollar is just screaming up, which gold's priced in dollars in this situation. And we're going to take a look at the dollar really quick again. Sitting right at this inflection point and not wanting to go down. Uh, it's, you know, again, I think we're going to move higher in the dollar and the gold may have to react a little bit to that, but it's interesting how it's hanging in there at this stage above 1,200. Very interesting. We never uh, covered the – just want to look at the DAX really quick. There's the DAX on weekly. I want to pull up our daily here. Um, right in the middle of fair auction, and we've got that former inflection point right here at – Okay. This inflection point, which is 98.13, we're getting very close to that. Remember that previous profile inflection points have a it's pretty serious relevant on the current profile. This is a new profile today on the DAX, so we've got to lend a lot of credence to that 98.13.25 area. If you're trading the DAX, that's going to be your target on the upside and hopefully a place you can leverage and put stops above on the short side. We'll be right back, folks. take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this 
prospectus and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Masters Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. TFNN has just announced a special sale for the Gold Report for a limited time only. To celebrate the 660th weekly issue of Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, that's more than 12 years, TFNN is having a special one-time sale. Right now, you can receive 60 weeks of the Gold Report, that's 14 months, for only $600. We're offering Tom O'Brien's dynamic weekly newsletter at only $10 a week, half off the regular monthly price. By taking advantage of this special offer, you also get a signed copy of Tom O'Brien's best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, an $88 value. The Gold Report is published every Tuesday and provides subscribers with Tom O'Brien's expert commentary on the industry, as well as detailed information on a variety of mining equities. This offer is valid for current or new subscribers, but is only good through this week and ends this Sunday, December 21st. Lock in the low rate of only $10 a week for The Gold Report by placing your order at the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Steve Rhodes as he teaches techniques on technical analysis using pattern recognition, celestial charting, Fibonacci, and other tools. The Trader's Edge, next on TFNN. Hi, welcome back to the show. Tom, are you there? Yes, sir. What's, hey. what's going on? Hey, hey, we're switching switching positions here. How are you? I like that. That's a beautiful <laughs> thing, man. Totally, totally. What's uh, what's going on? Well, well, besides the the S and P's uh, <laughs> gapping higher. <laughs> yeah, really, really. As much, as little sense as that makes sometimes to me, it's just my goodness. We're above profiles on the on the uh, daily again now. And so that that's I mean when we you know when when you were on on Monday. So uh -huh. what day's today? Today's Thursday. Yeah, no, even Tuesday. Tuesday, you're yeah. saying that the weekly hadn't croaked yet. That's the bottom line, right? Yeah, yeah, I got that up right now. It was just hanging in there, and then we coincidentally had that 1968 number sitting there, and you know what? You got to take a shot. You know, I mean, it, it, you can put stops in. That's the, that's the beauty of trading is you can do the risk reward thing and. When that thing started running, I mean, it was almost like add to the position. You know, it was oof, crazy. 
crazy. Well, so, so where, so right now, you have, you have we have the daily. Yeah. That is green. Well, of course, you're going to have everything right now. The 240, everything's green, right? Yeah. Yeah, everything's green. And and uh, the inflection point to pay attention to right now, in my opinion, is that 2027 area. Um, that's kind of where we may start, you know, having some relaxing states here. Um, 2027 being on the screen right there, right there. Okay. Uh, but that's given to you also in this thing. If I go in here and clear this stuff out, add my futures back and – uh you wait for that to populate. Oh, I still got my still got my my uh, sword in there. Let me get that right. Okay, so now we we go down here. Oh, I see that twenty twenty seven. Okay, cool. I got it. Okay. Yeah. So we go back into the S and P's, and and there's the twenty twenty seven rounded off number right there. Yeah. So, uh, you know, hey, we got it as traders, man. Uh, phew, it's hard to outthink this thing. You just kind of got to go with what's presented to you. You know. Well, what's so cool is that the, you know, and folks, if you haven't test drove this, uh, the scanner yet, you can do it right now. Um, 30 days, absolutely free. And just, you, you go over to TFNN, you go to newsletters, go to services, and you'll see the scanner right there. You know, in this type of market, I mean, you know, my take is that this is still a bear bounce, you know, and it's vicious. There's no doubt about that. So it's going to be interesting to see how this shakes out. I don't expect uh, a failure out here today, but I do, what I do expect is that you're going to see a dramatic decrease in volume. So yeah. we'll yeah, see I mean, where that shakes out. Because it's going to be hard to decrease in volume, too. Do you know what I mean? That, that's kind of how yeah. this thing should shake out. Because um, if someone was laying into it on the short side, well, they got to, if they laid in yesterday, they probably got to cover. If they were in a few days ago, you really don't have to yet. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, I, I hear you, and I'd, I'd love to see this thing get back below 2027. It could provide some decent short trading opportunities. I really like it when we overshoot that a little bit, kind of get some people stopped out a little bit, trying to, you know, play against that. Um, but, you know, this landscape view I'm showing you right now, it just gives you all those major high-probability areas right in your face right there. You can just look at it and see the levels basically on each time frame. Look at um, that. And, yeah. Uh, you know, this thing is actually real time. I mean, we're not giving away real prices, but we're giving away real level of the market situation. So uh, these things are, I mean, it's, it's great to uh, get all these exchanges basically and get the uh, information in a real time manner. Yeah, know? there's no doubt. So yeah. it, it must feel good being back in the States, being on a, a, a time frame, right? <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, in theory, yeah. I got up at one thirty a.m. this morning again, but that's, that's okay. Oh, that's funny. Oh my god. <laughs> so, so, uh, yeah. Well, listen. I hear the music. Uh, I hear you're going to be doing the next show. Is that man? Uh, that was quick. Yeah. Holy yeah. cow. Well, I'll be around if you need me. I'm, I'm uh, obviously sitting at the desk here, looking at the markets. Well, that's a beautiful thing. We'll have to be growling and prowling. I think. All right, man. Okay, man. Okay. Thanks a lot. Tom. Thanks, John. Have a great one. Have a safe one. You stay right there, folks. We're going to be coming right back. David.